you just gained the day, you would never lose. A little warm, so don't worry about it. I think we got too many lights on. And, uh, children church, we got children church. Let's look at something in Galatians so I can get you out of here. Uh, Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse 9 through 10. Galatians 6, 9 through 10. I want to show you something. Yeah. Let them go to children church. You know, get, get them to the altar now. Let them go to church. Go to their own class. Thank God for last Saturday, last Sunday morning we had um, Wes and Stephan to minister last Sunday morning at 9 o'clock service. Did a phenomenal job. It, it's, it's very rare when the teacher gets taught by the student. It lets me know something was implanted in them. So it makes me feel good that if I do have to stay away or get away or go away or whatever way I have to go, <laughs> that, that, that God got some, some people that know how to carry on. And so that's what you're doing to your children when you bring them to the altar and introduce them to Jesus, introduce them to prayer and worship and teaching them how to lift their hands. Guess what? Now when you go on, they got something to carry on with them. Yeah. They may not can't cook the cake that you cook, but they can cook up a praise. I think the ushers will pass out fans if you need one. And we don't, they cut the air conditioning heat off, they cut the heat off good. I'm hot because of these lights. In Galatians 6, verse 9 through 10, we did a teaching this morning, a dual teaching, but today I want to kind of just concentrate on one particular subject, and that is life is wearying me. Life is wearying me. I kind of changed it up a little bit at the last second. I know it's a headache for the sound team because I already gave them a different subject. So now they got to change that subject too. <laughs> but they made just say, you know what, Pastor, we're just keeping it. Whatever happened, happened. <laughs> Life has a way of wearying you. Things that you were praying about, believing, and you can touch it and see that it's around the corner. And then when you get around the corner, like it get further away. So life has a way of wearying and wearing you down. And I said this earlier, you have people that have jobs that requires them to use their brain a lot. And so you become mentally weary. And then you have some folks that have jobs that require them to use their muscles and they become physically weary. But then there's another one that, that's really dangerous that we don't want us to get to that point and that's spiritual weariness. Spiritual weariness hits the core of your soul where Prescription and even rest is not always the solution. Notice I said prescription and even rest is not always the solution. Mm -hmm. Core, spiritual, spiritual weariness, it carries you to that place where you want to hurt yourself or either hurt someone else. You're, you're at a place where you just, I'm just 
physically, mentally, spiritually, I'm just dead. I don't have no life. I don't want to deal with anybody. You become lonely, you're depressed, you're oppressed, and you feel like everybody is against you. So you have to fight those spirits. You have to fight that when you start getting to that place where you're, you're weary and it's starting to eat to the core of who you are. You feel like nobody loves you. You feel like you're disrespected. And you just woe out. You just woe out. Home is messed up. Work is messed up. Finances like your health. And then, then the part that really gets to you is when you come to church and you feel like, man, I ain't even feeling it in church no more. I'm just not, I'm just not feeling it. And, and now you understand the scripture when it says fight a good fight. Yes. That's the part that's hard to fight is yourself. Fight a good fight of faith. What has God taught you over the years that you need to go and dig up and put into your life, the forefront of your life to use? Because what happened is, is many of our weariness is really some of it, some of it, not all, some of it is selfishness. <laughs> Something you want and you can't have your way so you become a child and start pouting. Mm -hmm. You're kicking rocks. <laughs> you don't want to deal with nobody. Then there are some situations where the core of you just, I'm just tired. And some people do take their life. Some people take other people's lives. But how do I overcome that, Pastor? How do I deal with this thing called weariness where I just feel like I'm just, and, and don't worry about it. Today you feel strong. But tomorrow coming. You ain't through living. What, what you face today, you, you can deal with, but something may come next week. That may hit the core of you. And you don't know when that thing may come. And you got to be prepared. So Galatians 6 and 9 says what? What it says really? Let us not become weary in doing good. Now, now look at this scripture. It, it says, let us not. So that tells me something. That, that L-E-T has a condition behind it. That, that's my choice. I chose to allow something to affect me. Now, granted, now, we're not trying to tell you, you that you, uh, even su Superman got kryptonite. <laughs> Everybody got something, something in this world or somebody you love can be your kryptonite. Let somebody bother your child, especially if your child helpless. Uh, see, some of y'all about to heat up now. See the steam rising off some of y'all here while I'm talking. Some of y'all eyes getting bloodshot just looking at me. <laughs> but the scripture says, let not, let, let, let. Read it again, Rita. Let us not become weary in doing good. Now, one writer said, don't grow weary. In other words, a seed was planted, and if you ain't careful, that thing can grow. It, something can fertilize it where you keep feeding it. Have you ever played a motion picture out in your head before you got to work? Mm. Let me explain that. Is there anybody on your job that you really ain't too fond of? <laughs> They kind of bother you a little bit. I see now y'all want to get deep today. Is there anybody that, you know, you kind of like, you know what, I really don't, you know, they bother me. They get on my nerve. They kind of be saying little stuff, little smart, slick at the mouth. Mm. <laughs> and while you're getting dressed to go to work, and you got two hours before you get to work, but you're sitting at your house brushing your teeth, and you're saying to yourself, now if they say this, this is what I'm going to say. They bet not, if they do act like they want to, I'm going to cut, uh, bust them in. They, they bet not say, I got something for them today. Let them say, I got something for them today. Let them say something to me today. I got something for them. I'm going to say this. If they, if they turn to the left and turn their eyes, I'm going to turn my eyes. You, you play a motion picture in your head. What you going to, how many of y'all had a motion picture in your head if you don't want the 400, 500 million dollar lottery? Mm. Bam, me too. <laughs> I done paid off everybody's bills but yours. So now, what happened is, if you ain't careful, you can allow that thing to grow that you're feeling inside that's negative. And if you don't deal with it, it's going to deal with you. So the writer says, again, reader, 6 and 9. Let us not become... Let us not. So he's telling us that you can do something about your weariness. Now, now let me give you the definition of weary, because I want to take my time on this one. Weary means... Lacking strength. 
lacking strength and energy, tired and drained. Something is tiring you out. Something is draining you. And the Bible says you can stop it. But it's so easy. You know, I, I, I mess with my wife some days when we're driving. And, and I told you all this at 9 o'clock. Uh, when we're driving and somebody may cut us off while we're driving. And she'll say, oh, either somebody is riding on the side of us and I want to get over, but I ain't got my blinkers on. Listen to this. I don't have my blinkers on, but I want to get over. But there's a car riding on the side of us, and I'm saying to myself, man, why don't he just move out of the way so I can get over? Like he can see and understand what I'm going to do. <laughs> so my wife would say to me, she said, he's doing that on purpose. And I have to look at her and say, baby, that man did not wake up this morning and say, I'm going to ride on the side of Ellis, or I'm going to jump in front of Beverly so I can make her mad. He did not do that. It just so happened. It just happened. That man don't know I want to get over. And I ain't made no illustration that I want to get over to him. I didn't show him. I'm sitting there anxious because if I don't hurry up and get over, I'm going to miss my turn. So instead of me slowing down or speeding up, I'm mad because he riding on the side of me. That man minding his business. I'm the one anxious. Mm -hmm. You're going to catch on. He didn't make me upset. I made myself upset. Because, number one, I didn't plan properly. So if I hear the word of God, come to church, I'm making myself, I'm preparing myself, I'm planning for whatever getting ready to happen. Mm. So God is already telling me, don't be weary, don't be tired, don't, don't be so to the point where you want to throw in the towel and give up because something ain't working out. How many of y'all work waiting on some money and it ain't came yet? Yeah, me too. <laughs> So 6 and 9 says what, Angie? Let us not become weary in doing good. So the writer says, don't become weary in doing good. I'm doing something. I'm on the right track, but it looked like I'm not being respected. I'm on the right track. I'm doing everything possibly as a man, as a woman, as a father, as a mother, but I'm not being respected. I'm doing everything I can on my job. I'm, I'm preaching the gospel. I'm doing everything in the church. But it seems like I'm being disregarded. And the Bible comes and warns us and tells us and says, listen, you're doing a good job, but don't be weary. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't, don't give up now because you, you look like you're being disregarded. That's good, Bishop. I, I, plant, I plant something in you to go through this. See, the problem is, we don't want to go through nothing. Come on, anybody want to go through something? I want to go through something. I want to go through something. No, I don't. I don't like no problems. But I got a Bible that tells me a man born of a woman. It didn't say you a few days, a few, a few problems. It's a full of problems. What you happy about today with your children and your spouse may make you mad tomorrow. So the scripture tells me, he say, let us not be weary. So you got a, a job to do. You got to check yourself. Because what happened is when you get weary, it's everybody's fault but yours. Selfishness sets in. They doing me wrong. I don't help everybody. When you're, when you're weary, it's always what you did. But you don't remember when somebody helped you with your flat tire. You don't forget somebody gave you a boost. But when you're going through, it's always about what ain't nobody doing for you. And then you say, I'm helping everybody. It ain't nobody helping me. What happened? Because weariness is starting to develop. And the Bible just told us in Galatians 6 and 9, what again? Let us not become weary in doing good. Don't become weary. Weary. And one writer says it, don't grow. Don't let weary grow. So weary can set in, but don't let it blossom. Because what happened is, if you keep thinking about that thing, then that thing going to bloom. But if you don't put that thing on check, I heard, I heard Slaughter, Elder Slaughter say this in Sunday school, if you would come, Elder Slaughter said this in Sunday school, he said that somebody messaged him, on Facebook, and they sent him some woman messing around having sex, I guess, with an animal. And he said, who sent this mess to me? So he deleted it instantly. But, but, but because that seed was planted real quick, 
he found himself kind of going back into it. So he had to keep fighting in the spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind that thing. Father, I cast that thing out of my mind. Father, I plead the blood. But he, it kept fighting his mind. Mm -hmm. But he kept fighting his mind back. Oh my God. The world and situations are always trying to infiltrate. So what are you going to do when things ain't working out for you? I feel like a rapper. What are you going to do when things ain't working out? What are you going to do? Are you going to smoke it out? Are you going to cheat on your spouse? Are you going to drink it out? Are you going to leave? Are you going to pray? I wish I had a better. Fight! Tell our neighbor, fight! And when you fight, you don't fight with substance. That's why you need to be in a word church. So when things do happen, wait a minute, when things are going good in your life, everything prospering and God is using you and you got all that favor going on in your life because you had a new car, a new house, make sure you got a lot of word. Because when that day, tell a neighbor, that day coming. When that day come, when you don't feel like hearing no preaching, you don't want nobody telling you nothing about the Bible. You're going through right now. But when you got that word already planted on the inside of you, that when trouble do rise up, you can reach down in your bag and pull out. Tell anybody, I got me a doggy bag. What's the doggy bag? I'm carrying something home. Tell a neighbor, you better get you a doggy bag. You're going to have to eat again. My wife, we went to the movies last night, and I, I had, a, I had a, uh, a gift card. Somebody gave me a gift card. See, when you, somebody gives you a gift card, you, you buy everything. Now, if I had to use my money, <laughs> baby, you stop, don't get, don't get no soda. Get some water. That, that soda, $4.95. How much them popcorns? $12. I go buy a pack at Publix, come on now, for $3.99. Back in the day when I was growing up, we, we took us We took groceries to, with us. <laughs> and, and when my, and the lady I was dating, I told her what purse to bring. Said, Look, we're going to the movies, bring your big purse. We're going to stop at the store real fast. And when we, when we get the sodas now, when we get the sodas, you got to be smooth with it. Now, we know we ain't bring no soda in there. I mean, but, you know, they don't have canned sodas at the movies. Mm -hmm. So I tell my, you know, per look here, bring some straws. But we can't be showing ourselves. We can't, can't be revealing now. <laughs> can't be turning up. You got to get that straw and sip. I forgot where I was going to mess with y'all. <laughs> but I took my wife at the dinner, uh, yeah, to the movies. Took my, took my wife to the movies, and I, I, I had a gift card. Thank you, Bishop. I got something. I'm going to talk to you because you don't want to listen. So I got me a gift card, and, and it was $75 gift card. And so I told my wife, I said, order what you want. Order what you want. Ain't, ain't my $75. Order what you want. That's what you want. You want chicken wing? Get chicken wing. Chicken wing. You want, you want crab dip? Get a crab dip. What you want, a margarita? I mean, you want a Pepsi? So people was sitting next to us, drinking their wine. And you know, me and my wife were like, hmm, that smells pretty good, don't it? I said, yeah, we're going to get water, though. We ain't going to spend no $4.95 on soda or $40 on our wine. I got a $75 gift card. You can't spend $40 on one item. So I got chicken wings, and you know, I'm getting down. And I'm full. And I said, man, my wife said, why don't you get into the gold box? I said, no, they probably don't have that around here. So we walking at the movies, and the lady passing out the go boxes. My wife said, go, go, go box. I said, I ain't going back to get that. Let it go. I'm just going to let it go. Then when I got home, and I thought about them chicken wings, I said, Lord, I wish I'd have listened to my wife and got them chicken wings. So the moral of the story is, you better eat this today. And if you get full, get you a doggy bag. Because you're going to need it later. 
So please, somebody give me another seven five dollar gift card. So anyway, Galatians six and nine says what, reader? Let us not become weary in doing good. So the writer says, don't lack strength. Don't lack strength while you're doing doing what's good. Don't get tired of doing good. If you know you're doing the right thing, don't get tired of doing it. But pastor, they ignore me. No, no, no. The Bible ain't talking about what they did to you. The Bible telling you what you need to do to yourself. If you know you're doing what's right and righteous, the Bible says don't get tired because you're doing the right thing. But pastor, you don't understand what I'm going through. No, no, no. I need you to shut up because you're talking too much to yourself. And you need to listen to what God is saying to you. Stop talking to yourself because what you're trying to do is justify yourself. Read it again. Let us not become weary in doing good. Yes. For at the proper time. In due season. Come on and say in due season. I'm going to get my miracle. I'm going to get my blessing in due time. Is anybody in here a child of God? Anybody. Is anybody in here a believer? Is anybody in here saved? Then whatever you're going through, guess what? You coming out. God ain't going to let me stay in this forever. I'm coming out of this. Now, I said this Wednesday night. There's two reasons why God bothers your patience. There's two reasons why God bothers your patience. It looked like the thing you in is taking too long and is wearing you. And there's two reasons why that's happening. If you're a believer now, if you're a believer, this is reason one. Because he's trying to build a testimony out of you. Whatever you're going through, you can't tell me nothing because you ain't been through nothing. So if you're having financial struggles, marital struggles, health struggles, children's struggles, whatever struggles, job struggles, and you go through it as a Christian, and you keep your head up even though you got tears in your eyes. My God. You still come to church even though you got tears in your eyes. You still hurt, but you still give God glory. And then in due season, he brings you out. Now you can turn around and tell that person that's following you, let me tell you how my yeah. God brought me out of that. You can't tell me nothing if you ain't been through nothing. So the reason, number one, your patience are being tried is because God trying to build a testimony. You can't tell me nothing if you ain't been through nothing. And then number two, how many of y'all are a little weak in areas? Amen. In, some of y'all say, I ain't weak in no area. Yeah, 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 I am. How many of y'all are weak in some areas? Okay, watch this. So what God trying to do now is build character. I got to take you through something. It's going to take a while. You, I, don't, I don't never want to talk to nobody who got a marriage ministry and they ain't never had an almost divorce. <laughs> I don't want nobody standing in front of me telling me what the, how marriage should look and you ain't never went through nothing in your marriage. And the reason why some of you having some marital issues is so God can use your marriage. Amen. Amen, Bishop. And then you can look at your baby while y'all up there meet, pre preaching together. Yeah. Didn't it, baby? Didn't I almost leave you? Yes, you did. And I almost left you too, didn't I? But didn't God bring us out? Yeah, good boy, you know I love you. Come on, somebody. You got to be able to tell somebody what God brought you out of. So God trying to get you and build your character. So when I pray for people who get married, I always say this. I say, Lord, let people that see their marriage see Jesus. So read what it says in verse 9 again. Let us not become weary in doing good. So the writer says, become. Another writer says, grow. So you're growing in weariness. You're trying to tell them, see, 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 Husbands and wives, people in general, you've got to learn to listen to one another. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me tell you about me. Watch this, watch this. The problem is we put respect on who we want to respect. But the person we need to respect, we don't respect. <laughs> Bishop Goff, can I use you for a second? A 
All right, stand up for a second, Bishop Goffin. This is Dr. Bishop Goffin. Preach around the world. Oh, he can tell me anything. Yes, Bishop. Yes, I honor you. I respect you. Okay. Stand up, Hope. Elder Hope can come to me. Bishop, yes, what do you want to tell me? What do you, what do you, what do you got to say? What do you got to say? Let me tell you what the Lord telling me to tell you. Now, it's always the Lord got me telling him something. But when it comes to Bishop Goffin, I ain't got nothing to say about the Lord to him because I got to respect the person. Mm. Sit down, please. Thank y'all. So what happened is, in your house, you don't listen to each other. It's true. But a man will listen to the first lady and a woman will listen to the pastor. But for some reason, the man don't want to listen to his wife and the wife don't want to listen to her husband. I get a better amen next week because you respect who you want to respect. If I'm lying, why you change when you get a phone call? Let your wife talk to you. Okay, I'm talking about me. Let my wife talk to me about something. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm really saying shut up. <laughs> and then don't, don't let her back me in the corner. She'll come to me and my favorite movie on, a game on, she'll say, can I talk to you for... I'm looking at the TV and I'm looking at her. I don't want to say no, but don't you see me looking at TV? Can I talk to you for a minute? Immediately I go into def defense mode. Yes, what do you want to talk about? Well, I just want to say, do you mind, please, da-da-da-da-da? Sure, but do you mind, please, da-da-da-da-da back? <laughs> See, it's always got to be what they got to do back so you can have an advantage. <laughs> but let me call you. Hey, Pastor. How you doing, sir? What can I do for you? And that's why your man don't like church, because you love me more than you love your man. Lord Jesus. I got quiet now. I got quiet now. Your man don't want to have nothing to do with church because you show him, God and the man, more love than you show your own husband. Mm. I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Saturate me. <laughs> Take control of me. And your husband sitting over there saying, I ain't touched you in six months. Can I take control? <laughs> I got quiet now. I got quiet now. I got quiet now. <laughs> he over there. Now you mad. Pastor, can I meet with you? For what? He, he out there cheating. I see why. Because you love it on another person. You the one started cheating first. You don't love your house. You don't love what God gave you. I, I, love, I do love, I love my children. You show more love to your children than you do to your spouse. Your child is not your husband. Your child is not your wife. They are a seed for them to blossom and move out. And everybody weary in the house. That's why nobody can't praise God because ain't nobody listening to each other. I get amen next year. So the Bible said, don't grow weary. So pastor, what do I do when everything in my house is going wrong? Uh, cuss. No. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. You're already doing that. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. <laughs> Y'all still laughing, huh? <laughs> what does it say, Rita? Let us not become weary in doing good. Don't become. So when you see something that's brewing, find a way to talk about it. We've got to come together and make a decision about this thing that's brewing. Let me give you an example. My wife came home, and she turned to the... Uh, pot on to fix some coffee, coffee no, uh, tea, fix some tea, and she got one of them fancy tea, tea pots, red, the handle do all this here, you got to push a button, you know, I ain't used to that, I'm old school, just grab that silver pot and pull, now you got to push a button, and then, you know, when I push a button, it pop up, pim, I said, wait, what's going on, and then, and then this one, whistle for real, you know, you know, the old ones, this one, Well, 
that's just when he'll be whistling, I be wanting to dance. <laughs> so the teapot was whistling, and it got, and you know, and, and so I'm, my wife had a phone call, and she ran upstairs with the phone. And so I'm looking at TV, and I hear the whistling, you know, that's whatever, it's making that sound. And so it kept getting louder and louder. That's what kind of teapot that is. And so I'm sitting there looking at TV, and I'm looking at the steps, and ain't nobody coming down. I'm like, don't you hear that pot? The pot two feet away from me. <laughs> but because she put the water on, I think you ought to take care of it. So she realized the pot was hollering because she heard it from upstairs. She said, hey, honey. I said, yeah, I know it was coming. Can you turn that off? Sure. With a lot of hesitation. You turned it on. You turn it off. See, that's the problem in marriages. You keep in score. Amen. I turned it off last week. Well, you turn it off this week. You don't know how to love each other. You keep keeping, you keep trying to keep them being disadvantaged above of yourself. In other words, you don't want nobody to take advantage of you. In your marriage, you all, all hard and tough. My wife sent me a nice little love letter by text because she's been going all week. And so she sent me a nice love letter, you know, already crazy in certain areas. She's been going a week, so you know all kinds of stuff in my head. So she sent me a nice love letter. She said, I miss you. I'm so glad you're in my life. I love you so much, and I can't wait to see you. Mm. <laughs> oh, she's feeling guilty. I got you. I got you. I got you. You done got up there, and now you're feeling guilty now. So now you want to reach back and get me to respond and make you feel better. I ain't responding. I'm weary, but I was weary before she left. All I did was let it fester and build up when I should have killed it on the day she left. See, you... The Bible says in Romans 12, I think it's 1 and 2, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You got to renew your mind. If you don't renew, renew, re, 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 re. Just because you got a brand new car and you put gas in it one time, it don't mean you ain't going to need no more gas. <laughs> You're going to have to renew your mind by constantly putting word in you, putting word in you, putting word in you, so you can fight your battles. Yeah. I told y'all at 9 o'clock, one day, I was so angry with my house, I jumped in my car. I ain't taking no clothes. I'm leaving. I had no destination. I'm just going to drive. I'm mad with God. I'm mad with my children. I'm mad with my wife, and I'm mad with y'all. I'm out of here. I jumped in my car to drive away because I wasn't coming back. And this song, Tamala Man, I can't stand her. The song, Bishop. I ain't got nothing against Tamla Man, but I don't like her song. That Take Me to the King, I'm sick of that song. The light, I told him 9 o'clock, I said, the light must be had a contract. We'll play it every five seconds if you give us. You know, so the light played it every five seconds. Every time you turn the radio, take me to, ah. So I go to R&B. I'm tired of hearing Take Me to the King. Well, I'm going through. I'm weary. I'm hurting real bad. I don't want to talk to nobody because weariness will make you get, be isolated. So now I'm by myself driving on the highway, don't know where I'm going, but I'm leaving everybody behind. Weariness will make you want to walk away from it all. So as, as I'm driving, she comes on. What's the first verse, verse line? Somebody help me. I forgot how to. Truth is, I'm tired. That's it. That's me. So she got my attention. Truth is, I'm tired. I know it don't sound the same, but you understand what I'm saying. So guess what? I went immediately into agreement mode. Yeah, that's me. I'm tired. And she's talking to God. I'm talking to God too. I'm tired. What's the next verse? My option. I'm driving because I ain't got no options. My options are few, so I'm just going to hit the road. I'm leaving my family. I'm leaving the church. I'm leaving everything. So I'm, I'm listening to this song, and then she kept on going. And I said, yeah, yeah, 
And she's like, take me to the king. Now, if I didn't have word in me, she still today wouldn't have her husband. If I didn't have word in me. If I didn't have word in me, I wouldn't be up here preaching today if I didn't have word in me. If I get the word in me, that when troubles, weary, t patience, everything come up against me, I got something inside of me that I can tap into. Amen, Bishop. You, you better have, when you come to church, you better get some word in you. So that when troubles do come in your house, when troubles do come in your house, and they're coming, come on and say, they're coming. They're coming. Troubles coming, come on and say, trouble. Somebody say, Pastor, he already here. He knocked yesterday morning, Pastor, and we opened the door for him. And, and you know why you both mad? It's because you both think you're right. So true. And nobody don't want to do what the Bible say do. What is it for you to be wrong? Why don't you give space? See, see, right now, it's easy for what I'm preaching until I get out of here and get to my house and wrong in my house. I got to remind myself, you know how I bit my tongue so many times to keep from cussing and fighting in my house? I don't like some stuff in my house, but I bite my tongue and pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I done been cussed out. Well, not totally cussed out, then I'd be in jail, but I've been cussed at. The situation was cussed at, how about that? By my own children, and, and I had to, mm. Father, Father. Help me, Father. Give me strength with this one, Jesus. And then they call you or text you. I love you. I'm sorry. And you still hot. What you going to do with it when you know you got done wrong? That country talk. When you know you got done wrong. And the person that did you wrong say, I'm sorry. Your reply can't be, you ain't sorry. You always do that stupid stuff. No, you want to hold on to it. So you can be in charge because a person that's forgiven look weak. And your flesh going to tell you, are you crazy? Do you know what they did to you? You ain't going to forget. No, 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 no. Change the locks. Get your gun. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you how many times I did that. One time I got so angry. I contemplated going to get my gun. That's how angry I got at my own child. You going to, so I'm going to beat you with my fist and I'm going to shoot you. And then I, I rebuked myself and I said, you know you're wrong. How did you get to this place? How did you grow weary? You, you let something build up. Are you, am I talking to anybody? You, 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 you let something build up in you. You didn't fight you. You wanted to fight the person. Amen. And, and you didn't know how to deal with you because you want justice. But a believer who got favor realized, I'm coming out of this. I don't like it, but eventually I'm coming out of this. My son, my son, he, he, he left the house when he was 18. And he, he really didn't call me for years. And I'm a family man. I love my family. My son went off to college. Got him a job, got his own business, didn't call me for years. You know, here, you know, I call him when I get to Atlanta, he wouldn't even pick up. I said, man, man, I'm hurting, man. I'm a family man. Why my son doing me like this? Now, he'll check in every now and then with his mama, but he wouldn't check on, you know, I want, you know, you train a boy. You want the boy to call his daddy. Hey, daddy, my son. There's something about when that daddy said, my son. Like Charleston Heston come out of my son. Like Moses, my son. Dad, he called me one, one Christmas. He said, Dad. I said, yes. How you doing, Dad? Fine. Dad, I need to tell you something. Go ahead. Because I'm mad. I don't let weary build up. He said, Dad, I need to say I'm sorry. Huh? Scooby-Doo. Huh? Dad, I'm, I need to apologize to you. About what, son? Dad, I ain't been the best son. I ain't call you. He said, but that's going to change. You're my daddy. Now watch this. 
I'm his stepdaddy. But he said to me, he said, but you're my daddy. And I ain't treat you right. And I'm sorry. Tears flowing down my face. My son gave me what I needed. Then I hear from him for a couple of more months later. <laughs> but I got what I needed. I know he loved me. See, what's growing is, weary is growing on you. And everything around you now is looking bad. And you don't see no good nowhere. Because you hurt. What verse 10 says, Rita? Therefore, yes. as we have opportunity. As you what? Have opportunity. What did I do? Let us do good to all people. Don't give up doing good. To how many people? All people. My husband. All people. Wife. All people. My children. All people. My mama. All people. My daddy. All people. My brothers. All people. My sisters. All people. Don't give up. But you don't know what they did to me, Pastor. Don't give up doing good. You're going to get a reward if you quit trying to be justified. I know what I'm talking about. I know what it means to be thrown in the back of the bus. My family, I know what it is to be trampled on, and I know what it feels like to feel like you're doing all the work and nobody is giving you a hand. Like the other person getting away with murder, and you sitting around, you trying to do everything in the house. Come on, women. Come on, men. You raising all the children. You cooking all the food. I know what it feels like. My wife know what it feels like. I'm doing ministry while she's taking care of the children. She cooking dinner. She cleaning the house. She helping them with homework. And I'm out there telling everybody how to get saved. And then I go home and eat my meal and sit there and burp and look at TV and say that was a good food. And she burnt out. And now she got to go to work and make a paycheck too. Then I expect her to come home and be a full-time mom. I know what it feel like. She know what it feel like. Listen to somebody. You're weary because you feel like you're in it by yourself. And ain't no need of talking to your spouse because they ain't going to do nothing but argue with you. <laughs> Somebody said, Pastor, you preaching. Go, give me a... You need to put $5 in my hand right now. Don't put it on the altar. Just put it in my hand. You're getting weary because of the bill up at home. You don't want to have nothing to do with church. And you barely even want to touch your spouse. Because you ain't attractive no more. Because you feel like you're in it by yourself. And the Bible tells you when you have an opportunity. When you have an opportunity. Verse 10 says what? Therefore, yes. as we have opportunity. What should I do? Let us do good to all people. Do good to, no matter how bad you feel, keep doing good. Keep doing good. I've learned something. I learned something. It took me some years to learn this, but I learned something. When I'm angry with my wife, I do more for her. I said I learned something. I learned something. The more I'm angry with her, the more I do for her. Why you do that, Pastor? Because I'm trying to get out of this mess. I don't need to hurt the ministry after 32 years of marriage and all of a sudden I'm getting a divorce because of my ignorance. Sometimes you, you want too much attention. Verse 10 says what, Rita? Therefore, as we have opportunity, what? let us do good to all people. Yeah. Especially to those who belong to the family of the believers. So now watch this. I got a double indemnity. I don't know what I'm getting ready to say. Just make up stuff. I got a double indemnity. Uh, the word I can't find right now is importance. I got a double indemnity. I owe double. Right? Not that. Yeah. I, 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 I owe more. I owe more in my marriage than I do to y'all. Number one, stand up, sweetie. Number one, God gave me. Give him your Bible. You gotta hold your Bible. Let that young man teach that young man how to be a man. Hold that Bible for that woman, boy. All right, number one, I saw her, right? Mm -hmm. I saw her. I'm attracted to her. You know, on first look, Love at first, first sight. What did they? Love, love at first, first sight. sight. It wasn't no love at first It was lust at first sight. I said, whoa, whoa. whoa. Let me go 
check that out. So I go over there and find out oh, what it's all about. And I realize, well, I think I like her. So now I take her from her mama house. I take her and bring her to my house. Now she's mine. That's my wife. And I believe God gave her to me. Because we got saved and we both were saved. I mean, we got married and we both were saved. We got counsel to make sure that we need to get married. Now, we realized we love each other. We had all kinds of problems with her family, my family, and the church family. We had a lot of problems, but I, stick with, I stuck with her, right? All right. Now, I'm obligated to one woman for the rest of my life right here, mm -hmm. right here, right? Mm -hmm. So that's obligation number one. But the latter part of verse 10 says, what, Angie? Especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So now, now she's two things to me. She's not only my wife, but she's my sister. So I just can't be treating God's property any kind of way. I got to remember that God gave her to me. The Bible say when a man, come on men, come on, come on men. Some of y'all just too, thank you, punkish. This is it. Weak. You ran after her to get her. Now you got her. Now you want her to run after you. The Bible say when a man findeth the wife, you better keep chasing her. Yes, sir. Because a woman love a good chase. Oh, sit down, baby. Oh, you let me go and tickle her around her waist. Tickle, tickle, go, stop, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I like to get on a tickle. Tickle, tickle. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Come on, let's go out and eat. Let's go get some dinner. Oh, these prices kind of... I ain't tell you to be judging the prices. I told you, let's go out and eat. What do you want to eat? Just get what you want. On the inside, I'm saying get something cheap, but get what you want. <laughs> you better learn how to keep chasing your woman. You done gave up chasing. Bow, wow, wow, yippee, yo, yippee, yay. I wish I had somebody. That's the, See, but, but when you don't chase your wife, you're going to chase something. Because that's the spirit that's in you. Every man you call to be a chaser. And if you don't chase your wife, you're going to chase something. And woman, you need to give him something to chase. <laughs> yes, sir. My wife put on some perfume. I said, what's that right there? What's that? What's that right there? She said, you don't like it? I said, I love it. I be trying to act like a gorilla in my house, but ain't nothing to me. Ain't nothing to me. I'm just a meow. <laughs> but when you done lost, remember the illustration? I got respect for him. But I chose not to have enough for him. And he got the same word. Good, they both got the same word from the same God. But for some reason, I don't want to hear from you because I know you. But I want to hear from him. So that's why your marriage ain't working, because you don't sit down and talk and listen to each other. You debate with each other. If you do this, no, you need to do this. Talk to your mama. Talk to your mama. You know what your brother said to me the other day? See, y'all keep debating with each other. If one of y'all just learn to listen to that deep cry. See, there's, there's times, you know, me and my wife, I'm about to tell my story, right? I don't care. Thank you, baby. And, uh, there's times I, I cry out to my wife because I got, I got a need, you know, and I'm like, the need is, yeah, I just want you to sit in the living room and look at TV with me. You're always in that office. Can you just come look at, and she'll, she'll come, come out at, with five minutes left in the movie and sit down and she'll say, so what's going on? I know you didn't. So I get smart at the lip. I did it last night. Oh, you're just not coming out? The movie getting ready to end. She said, oh, she ignored me. Oh, okay, what, what, what happened? And deep down inside, I, I loved it. But I was trying to be hard because I was mad. Because this movie been on for two hours. It only got five minutes left. 
And you want to ask me what's going on? Uh, if you'd have came out the office, now she ain't asked for all that. But I need to give you some history here. If you'd have came out the office two hours ago, you'd have found out what was going on. But since you didn't want to sit here and look at TV, she just kept kept looking at TV. Are you stupid? Just go. <laughs> and guess what I did? Guess what I did? I gave her a two-hour movie in one minute where that man right there killed his wife and, and went after that man trying to get revenge. She said, ooh. She skipped the two hours and got it all in one minute. But I'm mad because she didn't sit down with me for two hours and look at TV. So over time, I expressed to her. I said, babe, again now. You're always in that office. You know, I'm kind of tired now, you know. You, you know, what I'm working on, I said, all right, well, all right, all right. Keep working on it, huh? Like I'm going to go somewhere. <laughs> I'm shooting blanks. Blam, 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 blam. But what I'm saying to husbands and wives is you got to listen to each other's cry. That's true, Bishop. What you take for granted is, is hurt for him or her. Good. You're going to have to listen to each other. Matter of fact, ask each other. You know, like yesterday, my wife came home because, you know, she was gone for a week. You don't mind if I talk about me. Thank you. Yeah, she was gone for a week, right, in D.C., so I'm home alone. So I ain't go out to cook, eat nothing. I ain't go out to eat nothing. I cook dinner every night for myself. I felt good because I want to save money. So I felt good. All right, I cooked dinner. And so I took a shower almost every night. So anyway, so my pet pee, this is my pet pee, this is my pet pee. Make sure there's some soap in the shower. So I went to take a shower, got the water running, I'm in there soaking wet, and I reach for the soap. <laughs> so I open the door, crack the door, it's sitting over there on her sink. I'm hot, but she gone for a week. I'm hot. I've been dealing with this mess for years. I'm sick of this mess. So guess what I did? I went out and bought a box full of, of soap and put it on her sink. Bam, bam, bam. She hollered, hey! I said, yeah? What's all this soap for? I said, let me holler at you for a second. I need to talk to you for a minute. I said, I've been letting this go for years, but I need to say something now. <laughs> this was yesterday. Less than 12 hours ago. This was yesterday. I said, look at now. I said, now, this soap, this is all yours. You do what you want to do with the soap. But the soap in the shower, don't you ever touch it. <laughs> but I'm sick of getting out the shower. Water all on the floor. I got to go back in the shower. And now I got to go get the mop. That's too much work for me. So from now on, don't you ever touch the soap in the shower again. I said to myself, all you want to. You better not touch that soap no more. Where we at, Angie? Galatians 6 and 10. Go to Philippians 4 and 6. The brother's coming. Philippians 4 and 6. Philippians 4 and 6. What does it say? Philippians 4 and 6. Do not be anxious about anything. Read it again. Do not be anxious about anything. Uh-huh. Read it again. Do not be anxious about anything. What to do? But in everything. What to do? In everything. What to do? By prayer and petition. Uh-huh. With thanksgiving. So I need to learn how to tell God thank you and praise him. Because I'm in a hurting situation. Don't make a quick move without prayer. Don't make a quick decision without prayer. Talk to somebody before you make a decision. Because you can make a hasty decision and it can hurt the house. It can, it can, it can really hurt the house. And, and I'm trying not to bother too many people's houses, but I got to bother them. Women, get out the way and let the man be the husband and the daddy to the son. 
Don't hit my, let him slap that child across the room. <laughs> Don't worry about his teeth falling out. Bow! You're going to grow up and be somebody. Don't you want your son to be somebody? Well, your husband got trying to help him. Go over there and eat that tree. Bite that tree. Bite it off. Hi, 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 hi. Don't hit my baby. Shut up. Get out of the way. Let the husband be the daddy. He's trying to help this child. You trying to, and man, get out of the way. Your daughter's not your girlfriend. And my cute baby, look at my cute sweetie. She's just so cute. You ain't even told your wife how cute she is lately. All the words you're using on your daughter, using them on your wife. Tell her how good she looked to you. Because if you don't, somebody else will. My wife told me when she got home, well, she didn't even get out the car good. You know, I went to the barber shop on purpose. I took a shower on purpose. Yes, sir. I put on the right jeans and the shirt to kind of go with it on purpose. I went and got the expensive cologne out of my cabinet and sprayed it on purpose. And I was sitting there at the, do at the door waiting for her car to come. And she pulled up in the garage. I ran to open the door and I stepped out. Now, if she could have saw me run from the door to the back door, she just saw a little goofy little boy. But when I got, when I got ready to step outside, and I, and I got what I was expecting. I got what I was expecting. As soon as I stepped out, she said, oh, look at my handsome baby. Oh, and I'm, I'm stepping down one step at a time. I want you to catch every side of it. She saw my jeans. She said, Whoa! I had my shirt hanging down. I flipped the back. Because what the street was going to give me, she gave it to me. If you would give your spouse what the street going to give her, then the street won't bother her. She said, you look so good. Girl, come here. <laughs> Whoa. Yes, sir. We're going to the movies tonight. What are we going to see? Don't worry about that. Order what you want to eat. I got that gift. We enjoyed the movie. She said, that was good. She said, sir, I won. I won because I went after. I got what I wanted. Well, one out of two ain't bad, but, you know, I got what I wanted. I, when you get out the, I can't, boy, when you, when you get married for a long period of time, you, you know, you're just happy, just a whole hand or something. <laughs> <sighs> Leave that alone. So, boy, y'all look at y'all faces. Y'all look. I see why y'all need to come to church. You you need healing. You got a little Rick James in you. I can see it on your face. But listen, weary. Don't let weariness overflood you. When you feel yourself getting frustrated, when you feel yourself getting overwhelmed, do something about it before it do something about you. Amen. Find out what your knack is that you need to. You know what? I got to do something about this. Maybe I need to take a little a, a drive, a little ride, just to clear my head. Maybe, maybe I need to get away for a minute. Maybe I need to go to the movies by myself. But don't do nothing so anxious where you get yourself and mess up your house. Because you need to tell yourself as a Christian, I'm a Christian. Come on, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And what I'm in, what I'm in is, temporary. is temporary. Keep that in your mind, please. Mm -hmm. don't, don't let what you're currently in be your future. This is not your future. Jeremiah 29, 11, God think good about you. Amen. He got something special for you. And if you realize you got favor, know what the devil trying to do. Bring disfavor. Yeah. I pray that something was said to bless you. Amen. Learn to spend money on each other. 
All right? Learn to spend money on each other. Do something together. Do something with the children, too. Do something with the children. You teach the children how to be a family. Do something together. Don't always do something by yourself with your girlfriend, with your boyfriend, bro brothers. and Do something with your wife and husband. Women, it's okay to ask your husband, would you like to go, on the move, like to, go to the movies? No, I ain't going to ask him, Pastor, because they ain't going to say that, but no. But it's, go get a card and put it in the card. Hey, I got two tickets. Go buy the tickets in advance. That's what I did to my wife. I ain't asked her, did she want to go to no movies? I told her I bought two tickets. I bought the tickets five days ago. But we went yesterday. Had one of them sit-down dinner movie theaters. Mash the button, your feet go out. <laughs> Enjoying ourselves. She eating her food, I'm eating my food. We having a good time. So do something. Quit all this here, you know, well, we got, the, we got bills. We got the kids. We can't go nowhere. You ain't going to never do nothing. Do you know my kids when I was little? When I was little. <laughs> <laughs> when my kids were little, come on, brothers and sisters. When my kids were little, me and my wife took our children everywhere we went. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about from, from their stomach to all the way when they became teenagers. Me and my wife, we wanted to take our children with us. And we went to a nice, fancy restaurant. We went to movies. And, my, you know, and we saw people actually get up and move from the table because we brought our three kids to the table. We saw people get up and move. And then we even saw some people come to us after everything was over. I just want to say, you got some very manable kids. And of course, the hood come out, man. But you expected monkeys. <laughs> now, now, who acting like a hood rat? Me. Because you stereotype my family. Just because I got three children, you think they're going to be running all over the table, kicking tables over. No, 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 I'm going to check this. I'm going to check my child. My child going to get a butt whooping. I let them know in advance, look at him, look at him, we're going to, a, I, I took my kids to Disney World <laughs> on I-95 doing 70 miles an hour, and my son was cutting up in the back seat. I pulled off on the side of I-95 and whooped that tail, <laughs> and then threw him back in the car. <laughs> Cars was slowing down, blowing their horn, I was tearing that tail up. <laughs> he got back in that car, I said, say something else. That was the best two-hour drive I ever had. <laughs> Even in church, I'd take my son. I'd be sitting on the front row. i hear my son back there cutting up, and I'd kind of cut my eyes back there, and i see my wife struggling. I, I eased up and went around there and snatched his tail up, carried him right in the back, and tore my son butt up every Sunday for about five years. Every Sunday, I had to whoop that tail because I refused to let my son disobey my wife and, and, and mess my name up in church, all that cr acting crazy. If you know how to act crazy, I know how to act crazy, too. Don't, well, Pastor, you should not whoop a child with your hands or ruler. My mama cracked my lip right there. Back tan my tail with them knuckles and bust that lip right there. Because I ain't say yes, ma'am. Bust this right here. And today, 56, is my mama still was alive? Yes, ma'am. My backhand made me say yes, ma'am. So don't be around here talking about uh, uh, psychologists say don't whoop your child. The Bible say, spare the rod. I ain't trying to get my child to go to prison. I'm going to whoop that hind part. My granddaughter, what's she going, she in the fourth grade? My, our granddaughter in the fourth grade, and she don't like to deal with me today. My granddaughter don't like to deal with me. My, mom, my wife said, you want to talk to your granddad? No. Mm -mm. <laughs> she was about two years old. My son was sitting there eating, eating breakfast on the table, on the floor, eating breakfast, and she went over there, <clears throat> and my son said, I'm old school. She gonna walk off with her chest out. I snatched her by her hair. <laughs> Slow, I ain't jerk her, I slowly pulled her back, and I grabbed her hand, and I pulled her hand down there, I said, now pick it up, and she was screaming, <laughs> I said, I'm screaming right along with you. Ah! Now pick it up. <laughs> Pow! Pick it up. <laughs> I guess I traumatized her. She was two. Now she's in the fourth grade. She still respects me. She don't want to talk to me. Because I know what you stand for. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. You revived us. You refreshed us. You taught us so well about weary. And Lord, I realize now that I have allowed this stuff to build up inside me. I'm going to deal with it, God. I'm going to deal with myself first. But God, give me wisdom of how to deal with my situation. Give me spiritual wisdom, God. I don't want to walk around defeated, frustrated, angry, upset, drained, tired. I want to walk around, God, with victory. Thank you for your word. I'm a changed man. I'm a changed woman after today. I will do better in my marriage. I will do better in my home. I will do better on my job. I will even do better in my worship. God, as I leave this place, never to leave your presence. Bless my house. Bless my family. And watch over them. Don't let no hurt, harm, or danger to come near none of my children or my house. I thank you for the gifts that you have blessed me with. Evidently, God, you're trying to do something in me. You're trying to mold something in me. You're trying to develop something in me. I'm still your child. And you can do whatever you want to do with me. God, get past how I feel and develop your baby. I thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Be a blessing in your giving, please. Start from the rear, march around to the front, touch the offering bucket. God bless you. Love somebody.